I've made a lot of fabric crowns, tried a bunch of different methods, and this video will show you the best. I'm making five point patchwork crowns and will show you three methods, an adjustable design for kids, something beginner friendly, and my expert method. I'll be using scrap fabric, but I'll share some options if you don't want to go down the patchwork route. To start, you'll need a pattern, and this is very easy to draft yourself. I measure my head and divide by 10. I strike a line and mark this measurement, then strike two lines at right angles. I measure up 9cm on one side and 6cm on the other, joining both marks with a straight line. Finally, I add seam allowance to all edges, in my case 1cm, and cut this out with craft scissors. I use this pattern to cut 5 panels from my scraps then flip it over and cut another five. You could of course cut the pattern on the fold, just make sure to remove the seam allowance on the longer edge first. If you don't like the patchwork look, you can easily draft a full cut on the fold pattern like this. One last thing, because I'm using lots of different fabric weights, I added interfacing to the back of any panel that was really thin or overly stretchy to make the assembly a bit easier. I can now start joining the panels with a straight stitch, matching long edges to long and short edges to short. Make sure you're layering up the fabric right sides together. You might want to take a moment to organise your panels before you start stitching to avoid getting mixed up. I now press over the seams and trim any fabric that hangs over the edge. I'm adding some decorative hand stitching at this stage because I think it looks nice. I use the finished face layer as a guide to cut out a panel of lining and batting. Each of the following methods will require three bits of fabric. So a face layer, whether it's a patched worked one like this or a complete single piece of fabric like this. You'll also need your lining and some batting. Batting is probably optional. If you are going to go without it though, I'd just make sure that the materials you're using for the face and the lining are quite stiff to give you that crown shape. This is my kid size version of the crown. The pattern for this is a little smaller. You'll also need two ties. I cut two good sized rectangles, fold and press it right sides together lengthwise and sew two of the open edges. Trim the corners, turn it out and press. To assemble, I lay out the face layer. Place the two straps with the open edges on the seam allowance and pin what will be the loose ends out of the way. I lay the lining on top, right sides facing, lie on the batting, then pin liberally. I sew along all edges, leaving a decent gap on the bottom edge. To give a cleaner press, I snip off the points and snip into the corners, making sure I don't cut the stitches. I turn out the crown through the gap and hand sew the opening to close it. And this is the finished kid's crown. This is great if you want to make something that will grow with your child, but it's, it's not very crown-like. We can do better. For this one, I have my face panel, lining and batting prepared as before. I start by basting the batting onto the lining with a loose stitch. You could pin this, but it doesn't take much more time and you'll avoid getting unexpectedly jabbed by pins. I fold the prepared lining right sides together and stitch the short edge closed to create a loop. I then do the same with the face layer. I put the lining inside the face layer right sides together, match up the points and pin in place. I can now sew the points of the crown and snip the points and corners in the same way as before. I then get to turn the crown out. This is when I take out my basting stitches. To hide the raw edge, we need to go back in time a bit. I have this length of waistband I'm going to reuse. I fold it wrong sides together and press, open it out and fold the raw edges into the middle and press again. I'm making bias binding by the way, and any rectangle of fabric will work as long as it's wide enough to create a pleasing edge when folded up into four layers. Before I had sewn the face layer into a loop, I had trimmed the binding to length using the face layer as a guide. Fast forward and I open out the binding and join the ends. Then with the assembled crown, turn to show the lining, I stitch the open binding right sides together, 
raw edges lined up. I turn the crown right way out again and fold the binding over the raw edge and once positioned, top stitch the binding in place. And this is the, the finished bound crown. This is maybe my favorite one that I made. I like the fact that I saved the little Fred Perry detail on the front. I've actually made a few using this method and I find this to be the quickest. So if you're gonna be doing this in bulk, this is the way to do it. It's very quick, it doesn't involve any hand stitching. But I'm sure there's a few of you out there that want something a bit more advanced. Okay, we're back with our original crown. The three layers have been joined along the points and all the corners have been trimmed. I'm going to mark one of the face seams with a pin and pin the same point on the lining too. But I'm not pinning these layers together, this is just for reference. I'm also going to add chalk marks to the lining at each of the face seams. After a bit of thinking, I have the crown opened out with the wrong sides of both the face and the lining on the outside. Here's the magic. Wrap the marker pins around the rest of the crown and pin these points together, making sure you don't catch any of the other parts of the crown. Now work around these two edges, matching up the marks with the face seams and pin them in place. Again, make sure you don't catch any of the loose bits of the crown. You're probably only going to manage to pin five or six of these marks and that's okay. By the end, you should have an ugly shape similar to this. Sew along the pinned edge. You can now turn this out and pull out the basting stitch. I'm going to press the crown into shape. You can see that I only managed to get about halfway around the edge with the machine, but it is better than nothing. To finish the crown, I fold and press the open raw edge and then hand sew to close. And this is the finished donut method fabric crown. This is fantastic. I'm pretty pleased with this. One thing I should point out is though that um, this was the first one I made and it got a bit got a bit big. The reason for that, you saw in the video, I sold all of these panels next to, like as I was going. Top tip, this is my recommendation because I made a few more since then. What you want to do is you want to join these, the, the point panels together first, get them looking nice and pretty. And then on the wrong side, you want to mark your measurement again, just to give yourself a little reference point so that when you join up each of the points, so to the mark that you've made and that'll make sure that you don't make this bigger it doesn't it stays the right size i think that's the end of the tutorial part definitely go make yourself a crown this is my personal crown this is the one i made for me long time viewers will notice that this is using a lot of the fabrics that were used in the forever ever jeans so i'm very pleased to have like used all those cutoffs to make my my sewing crown. Oh yeah, and this one, of course, it's, it's the offcuts from the kill. This is from a dad. <laughs> it should fit his head. He's got a very large head. I think this will be the last film before Christmas. I don't think I'm gonna manage to make another garment this year. All the best to you and yours, all those sort of things. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this content, why not watch a wee bit more? There's lots and lots of different things going on in my channel. If you're really into it, you can subscribe. So that's me. Thanks very much. And I'll see you next time.